this is an iPad. And I, I, isn't it amazing that a piece of glass is all we need to actually write anything? And actually, isn't it more amazing that Pages, Apple's, I think, rather underrated word processor, is right here on the iPad. And it's not like there's some sort of cut down light version, no compromise thing. There's no putting up with uh, limitations because it's on an iPad. The version of Pages on here is the same as the one on the Mac. Except bits of it that I think I think you routinely need when you're writing certain types of documents, they're a bit hidden. Here are some key examples, ones I think as a writer are the most immediately useful when you found them. Yeah. Hello, I'm William Gallagher, slight cold, sorry, and this is 58 Keys, which as ever, as always, is for writers. Writers like you and me who use and you write on Macs and iPhones and today iPads. Oh, except I should say on Mondays every week, there are videos that are for all writers, even if they use paper. Uh, do subscribe, please, or like this video because we have so much to talk about, starting with, I think, one key thing. Apple's Pages on any platform has a reputation, okay, for not being as good or as powerful as Microsoft Word, for not having as many features and tools. And it, actually, I think it's true. Word is more powerful. But for me, Apple and Microsoft come at this from like different angles. With Microsoft Word, when it isn't crashing, there are all of these features, there are all these tools, these toolbars and things, and you have to figure out how to use them. With Apple Pages, Pages is as close to a totally blank screen, a blank page, as possible. And I think Apple's reasoning is that you and I want to get on with our writing. We don't want to learn an app to do it. Nothing should get in our way. So the result is the very, very many features of pages are kept just a little out of sight. I like this. I like that the focus is on us and our writing, but it does mean that it's very easy for people to assume pages can't do things that not only it can, it can do very well and very easily. And there's a kind of natural assumption that the iPad version must do even less than the Mac version of pages. And that's actually just wrong. Starting with how, yeah, it is easiest to start a new document, right? When you want to write, you just actually you tap this button, start writing, and away off you go. But you can find any document, including Word ones on your iPad, pretty much as easily as you can on the Mac. So um, instead of tapping start writing, look for this sidebar icon. Um, if you don't see this, or you don't see the start writing button either, when you open pages on the iPad, you're probably already in a document. It will open up to the last document you're in, in which case tap this back arrow. Or actually you can be way down a list of recent documents, in which case, well actually the side button is, is sidebar button is right there. It's just in this kind of lozenge-like shape that stays at the top. One curious thing, this is a separate thing, but it's curious. In any iPad app, when you're way down a list or down a screen, down a document, whatever it is, you can tap at the very top of your iPad screen being careful not to touch those ellipses controls and you zoom straight back up to the top of your document to the top of your screen it's the same when you're in the, the pages document proper when you're actually writing but it's not quite the same when you're on this front screen of pages where you're seeing lots of recent documents here tapping like that takes you to the top of the recent documents not all the way to the top where the big start writing button is. You still have to swipe up manually like an animal if you want that start writing button. But whether you're at the top and it's there in front of you or you've got it in this lozenge control area, tap this sidebar button and you get a sidebar. Uh, I was gonna say this is similar to uh, the way the Mac lists folders and drives on the left of every window, but actually it's more than similar, isn't it? It's identical. Um, it tends to be that there are more on the Mac. There are fewer items on the iPad for whatever reason. Look at locations, please. I have not one thin clue why Adobe Acrobat is in there. Is in there, And it might not be in there with you in yours. I know I fiddled with Acrobat in the past, ages ago, so maybe, I don't know. Anyway, the things to focus on for you and me right now are iCloud Drive and on my iPad. You might disagree with me and I'd like to know if you do, but I can't think of a good reason to save your writing on the iPad itself rather than iCloud Drive. I mean, right, it does mean documents then literally on this iPad, so there will never be a time you can't write in it because it has to be downloaded from somewhere and you're wherever you are, you don't have a good internet connection. But then if someone steals the iPad, if you lose it, 
if if you break it ah or even if you just forget to bring it well no you can't write whereas if you save in iCloud Drive well then the next time you do have an internet connection your document is saved and it's saved everywhere it'll it'll be on your iPhone and you can work on it on your iPhone pages is on the iPhone I think the longer you've been a writer doing this the more startling the idea of a full word processor on your phone is I've been doing this for a long time I need a moment anyway with iCloud Drive you can go through all the folders and all the documents that are on your Mac as long as you're using iCloud Drive on the Mac as well and you can open any existing documents that's nice I don't find it very fast on the iPad though I don't know why it's not like it's really slow it's not like it's chore exactly but somehow finding a document I know is there and opening it whether I schlep through the folders and things or I search for it somehow it just doesn't seem as quick and it does seem more fiddly than it does on a Mac maybe that's just me but I find it enough so that I want quicker ways through it I want shortcuts and we have them uh, look below the locations section there favorites these are actually favorite locations for folders, so like folders for it they're not favorite documents find a folder or make one actually by tapping this icon of a folder with a plus sign and then press and hold until you get the pop-up menu choose favorite that's it now that folder is and always will be listed in your sidebar and you can get to it quickly you can also rearrange that list if you want to put your most commonly used uh, favorite folders at the top um, to do that actually tap the ellipses button then choose edit sidebar uh, you've seen this before you can tap a red minus sign to just totally remove the favorite and I know you know this but I need to say it you're just removing it from the list you're not deleting the folder itself or actually you can grab on those you can grab on those grab handles you can tap on those grab handles to rearrange the list and you know actually while we're here I'm going to switch off Acrobat you see those others like Yoink now those are apps that I actually remember using so presumably I did the same I installed Adobe Acrobat on my iPad sometime for some reason so well you won't have it and now I don't either uh, tap done when you're well done now when you find the document you want you can tap it and you can you know open it otherwise to get out of all of this and to go back to the front screen and it's big really encouraging start writing button tap the what is it squarish rectangularish icon with a line across the top there at top left the thing is right what we've really got here inside pages is a complete version of Apple's separate files app you can do all of this by leaving pages finding the files app opening it and schlepping through your documents that way it's exactly the same down to how that files app will now have the same favorite folders in it that you selected in pages the difference it's, it's chiefly I think it is handier to have all of this built inside pages but also while pages will show you any document you find on your iCloud Drive it won't open all of them documents are grayed out if pages can't have them like a video for example it won't open that uh, but pages can handle words so actually one way to open a word document in pages is to just save it have you liked your iCloud Drive come to this sidebar find it tap it opens and imports into pages but also if someone emails you a word document well then just tap on it in the email you will immediately get to read the document a quick view of it and that might be all you want but if you want or if you need to write in it there's an open in pages button right there that does raise the question though I think if, how do you send it back to them since you're writing in pages and they're presumably expecting to get a Microsoft Word document back to them when you're done rewriting them fixing their writing tap the share button choose export and send then choose word and then for some reason you get another share kind of option but okay choose how to send it to them probably through email or something all of this talk so far and we haven't actually mentioned you know writing doing the typing in pages for iPad yet whether you open an existing pages document open a word document or you tap on that I really rather like that button the start writing button the get on with it button you get to this point 
where you can get on with the typing part of our work. Uh, one exception, one important thing. If you're opening any existing document, you will sometimes not be able to write in it. It will be locked. To unlock it and allow yourself to write in it, you will find there's always a black button with edit written on it in white. Tap on that and away off you go, writing. And that might actually be enough for you. Here's a document. Here's your writing. Let's play our game. Uh, to save the document when you're done, by the way, tap the back arrow. That's it. If you, again, if you're doing this for a long time, that seems wrong. It takes you to the page's front screen, yeah, but it also saves the document on the way. And I think, actually, this is why Apple hides other features, other options that Pages gives us, because so often you don't need any of them. You solely need the space to write in. But assuming you need more, this is the first one I tend to need, a word count. Tap this sidebar button. It's entirely different to the sidebar button you've pressed before. It just looks identical and pops open a sidebar, but it's a really short sidebar in this case. And in that short sidebar, it has show word count. Choose that and oh, I think you'll be shocked, shocked to see that the word count of your document is displayed on your screen. If it's in the way, or you just, you don't want to know anymore, there's just put it out of our head. We'll go back to that same sidebar and the option has now changed to hide word count. But if it is that the word count is just in the way, well, you can drag it anywhere you want on the screen. And with a tap, you can change it from word count to, I think, decreasingly useful other counts about your document. Another one, actually useful one. One such count is the number of pages. If you are going to be printing out this document later, or maybe if you're going to be doing it as a PDF to send somebody, yeah, you're going to need to show, or you're just going to want to show the page number on the, well, page. Consequently, you need headers and footers. Now on the Mac, right, I think headers and footers in pages, it's like you uh, pin the tail on the donkey game. You have to click on the screen in just the right part of your page, and there isn't any indication where that is. Yeah. With pages on the iPad, it's far worse. It's like hide and seek, and I don't know why, but here's where headers and footers are hiding on pages for the iPad. This time, you tap on the name of your document at top left, because of course you do. Where else would it be? And just to make the game slightly harder, you know that thing about documents being locked and not? If the document is locked when you do this, you get a section there called document options, and all it has in it is this thing about setting a password. That's nice. But if the document is unlocked, so remember you tap the edit button to unlock it again, then the same document option section also has a document setup section. Tap on that. Um, you get this kind of drop down kind of pain, I suppose. And uh, just below the middle a bit, there are buttons for headers and footers. Turn on both, turn on one, turn on the other, turn on neither. It's entirely up to you. But if you do turn on one or both, then next, you haven't done it, you need more options because of, of course you want more options, quite obviously. But you tap on more options and now you get shown a layout of the page that includes, uh, it can include three boxes at the top and at the bottom, depends if you've chosen both headers and footers. Click in any of those three at the top or any of those three at the bottom boxes. They are header at the top, footer at the bottom, and the three parts correspond to whether your header is going to go on the left, the right, or centered in the middle. And while you're there, tap in one of those boxes and you get options to do with automatically inserting the correct page number in different formats. Um, if you're using a trackpad or a mouse on your iPad, you could right click there. And in that case, you get mostly the same page number options, but they're shown to you in an entirely different pop-up menu for some reason. Um, I should say, if you don't see these headers and footer boxes here, if you don't, you know, the three at the top, the three at the bottom, then it's because you, you hit more options before you turned on headers and footers in the last section. Without those, I mean, there's a point there, without those, this section is all about letting you adjust the overall page setup, the, the margins of it, but don't, don't do it. 
leave the margins where they are. If you do want to insert inset paragraphs and things, well, later you can move margins in the document itself. You can add tab tops, you can do all sorts of things. Messing about with them here is for changing the paper form. It's just, it's gonna mess with your head and your printer later. Um, if you are writing a pages document that's long enough to warrant having page numbers, then you're probably writing one that's long enough to warrant using styles. Quick story. I first encountered this styles thing in word processing in Microsoft Word for DOS. And I'll tell you, I, I just, I could not comprehend what they were. And then whatever reason I was forced to switch to word perfect for DOS and presumably styles were better explained there or maybe better implemented because there I got it and I got it right away. And it suddenly seemed so obvious and so easy that I forgot and I forget how hard it can seem. Styles is just is just a way of telling your pages document that this line of text is a chapter title, this is a subheading, and this is the main or the body text. And that's nice. Except pages will format those different types of text to suit what you need. So uh, once you say this is a chapter title, it will you know, probably be automatically made bigger than the body copy. It might be in bold. It could be all sorts of differences. All sorts of differences that actually you can set and change. Fine. Only, you know, you might reasonably be thinking you could have just selected the text and instead of saying this is a chapter, you could go right ahead and make it bold. You can make it a bigger font size. You can change the font face. You could do what you want. Yes, totally true. Except you would then have to do that manually for every single chapter. Okay. But then later, when you decide, no, you want something different or your publisher turns out to require something different, you'd have to go back through every chapter changing everything. Whereas with styles, you can just say, nah, it's not bold anymore. It's not this size, it's that. And it's this font instead of that. And once you've decided this, it changes. It all changes. Every chapter title, no matter how long the document is, immediately switches to the new form and you are done. To set that a line is, for example, a chapter title, well then either type it, select the whole thing and then tap on the paintbrush, the paintbrush format button, or tap on that button before you write anything. And then whatever follows will be in that style. Click under the paragraph style. It will probably, if you've never been in there before, it will probably say body, but then pick from the list of whatever you want. There's a lot more to styles. I mean, there's a lot more you and I could talk about them. And actually, maybe maybe we should. Maybe there should be a future 58 Keys video to be made on the topic. Look to see if there's a poster at the end. That means I've made one and it's there, but it won't be for a while yet. Styles, short version, godsend. In fact, styles are a reason to use word presses instead of text. Editors, which raises the issue of what is a text editor. Text editor just lets you type. A word processor lets you type a lot and has tools in it to help you manage a lot of text, such as styles, such as headers and footers. But for now, that's it for this edition of 58 Keys. Uh, do remember the 58 Keys writing workshop videos that come out every Monday. But in the meantime, otherwise, thank you very much for watching. Take care of yourself. Write more on the iPad, on the Mac, on pages, anywhere you like, just write more. It's important. And I'll see you soon.